in your mind or uh, you see them struggling to, to pr produce, basically? Well, first and foremost, it kind of goes back to what we've been talking about the whole time is when you get your license, right? Everyone's going, I'm going to get my real estate license because mm -hmm. I can't succeed in any of these other jobs. So I'm going to try this. It's this typically okay. what we see. When you get your license, it says real estate salesperson. Now, there, this is a stat from the National Association of Realtors. 92% of agents who get into the industry have zero formal sales training. And the kicker is almost the same percentage maintains that throughout their career. They learn how to do contracts and understand Realtor 101 stuff. That's kind of the training you get. Here's the forms. Here's how you write an offer. Here's how you list a property. That's not sales stuff. That's table stakes. So that's the number one mistake people make is they don't understand what their job is. And your job is simply this, to get people, and this is the job for any salesperson. I don't care what industry you're in. Your job is to get people what they want. And don't pretend you know what they want. So you have to be really good at asking questions and listening. Okay, that's step one. So you have to get people what they want and do it in a manner in which they're going to say nice things about you on the internet. So that mm -hmm. means you have to do some unexpected extras. And all people really want, at least in real estate, is they want when they're going in to acquire real property, they want instant equity. They want to get a good deal. There's ways to do that. We don't have time to discuss that on this show. When they're selling a property, what do they want? They want to maximize their equity. And there's a way to do that. Are you the person who is certain that you can do it? Because if you're not certain, they're not going to be certain. Whoever's more certain in any interaction influences the other person. And what's crazy, Simon, is the magic is this. They don't even have to believe what you're saying. They have to believe you believe what you're saying. Interesting. But most people don't believe. And it's so obvious. Who you are screams so loudly, I can barely hear what you're saying. Yeah. You know what? Just you bringing up the person that's more confident is naturally the leader in that role. And that's such a good statement because that applies to pretty much anything out there, whether it's a night out a sporting event, or it could be anything in sales. And it's true. If you show the confidence, you are the leader in that particular situation in pretty much almost any situation. Um, there are obviously times where you get a real estate client uh, that overvalues, say, their house. Um, and every time, yeah, yeah, every time. <laughs> that, how do you deal with that? Let's talk about that. So you landed a client or an agent here landed a client. Obviously, people have this emotional attachment to real estate. They raise their kids there, whatever it may be. They think it's worth $200,000 more than it is. How do you bring that client back down to reality and let them uh, believe in you as a, as a professional? Well, real estate's a unique thing. It is very emotional. And, and here's a good analogy. Say you're the seller, Simon. Mm -hmm. And you think you want to price it at a million. I think it's worth 800 Sure. Right. Now, I'd say this. Simon, you know, if you took a room full of all of the best agents in this area and you asked them this question, hey, were you surprised at how high a home sold recently? Every hand goes up. Oh, yeah, I can't believe that one got, they got 1.1 for this. I can't, can't believe it. You want to know why that is? These are good agents. They couldn't believe how high some of these things have sold. It's because the agents don't know the price. Interesting. The agents don't know the price. The appraisers don't know the price either. either. They just justify it for the bank. So right. I'm not going to come in here and say, I know what your house is going to sell for because I don't know the exact price. Now, well, Andrew, we need to have a strategic launching price. Of course we do. But yeah. very rarely is the listing price the actual sales price. I don't know what the sales price is going to be, but I know the freaking process to yeah. maximize your equity. And part of that conversation is a strategic launching price. I can't tell you how many homes we've listed where we listed for 800 and sold it for 950. Yeah. Now there, and then you have to, there's a whole, that's a whole half an hour kind of back and sure. forth cadence to this. But at the end of the day, they have to believe in you and your process to maximize their equity. And there's a process to do it. I draw it out on a timeline. You don't just put the house on the market. There's a lot of marketing and things that go on. And it goes back to influencing the outcome of the transaction through managing this ecosystem that we're all living in here. And let's talk about that a little bit more, Andrew. So how important is has analytics become as part of that launch process? How important is staging? How important is that initial investment from the buyer to get the property prepped for a better outcome. You mentioned properties rarely sell for what they're listed for. They could either go higher, exponentially higher or about at asking. But what 
really makes it push above and beyond aside from demand and good interest rates and all that the staging the uh the prep what do you think about that so this is a, that's an insightful question because there's kind of three stages of this and you got to win on every stage or else you're not doing the right thing for your seller your client your client is someone who's entrusted you to act on their behalf that's the agency relationship first is launching the property you have to market like the year we live in so I'll talk a little bit about that. Then when you're negotiating, you have to be a really skilled negotiator. Look, you're dealing with a buyer, the buyer's parents, maybe the lender. There's, there's price is one thing. Terms are just as important. When are, can they close on the home? How many inspections are they going to do? What type of loan are they doing? How much deposit do they have? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then once it is under contract, things come up. Inspections come up. Appraisals come up. You have to be a problem solver. So you need all three of these skills to get to where you want to go. Because the only thing that matters is how much money. This is what the seller cares about. Going back to getting people what they want. I get X wired to my bank account on this day. Yeah. Begin with the end of mind. That's what we want. The biggest number possible here. So... How do you get multiple offers and drive the price up? Well, it's all about demand creation. Can you create demand for this house? Most agents can't. They rely on, let's put it on the market. And yeah. there's this beautiful thing called the IDX, the Internet Data Exchange, which our industry and in their infinite wisdom fought the Internet. They didn't want to have this. So it's going to replace agents. No, when you put your house on, it goes to every single website. That's why you see them on Zillow and Redfin and Berkshire Hathaway and Remax and Coal Banker. It's everywhere. Okay, yeah. but what can you do before that? So obviously you have to prep the house. You look for asymmetry or where can I spend $1 and get three back? Kitchens, bathrooms, paint, it's worth hundred bucks in the can, thousand bucks on the wall, little things like that. Now this is one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, get the house looking ready. You wouldn't take your car in and have it beat to shit to go get it, uh, appraise the CarMax. Get this, yeah. let's see how much you're can gonna, I get? You're gonna get a lower appraisal, period. If you don't clean your car before you take it in. Right, so that's, everyone knows that. That's table stakes. Yep, yep. But what can you do to create demand before you put it on the market in this world goes back to data analytics i like to call it um buyer profile demographic targeting so can you create compelling content meaning can i go to this house and i have my own film crew we got drones we got all this the stuff nice. and we want to make it look like hgtv bravo comes in and we're going to tell the story about this house and all the key things and it's what I call three-dimensional storytelling because so I'm going to have my spin on it. I want the homeowner spin. They know this house better than me. Who am I kidding? They've lived here for 10 years. They know everything about the schools, the neighborhood, the, neighborhood, all the, yeah. the upgrades they've done. And then you can use AI to enhance it too for keyword-rich things. So it's three dimensions. I want my spin, seller's input, AI. Can you create the compelling content that if you just looked at the pictures, you would miss this because you can't hear the story about the homeowners and the schools and the neighborhood and the upgrades just looking at the pictures. No, you have to tell that story. Can you do that? Okay, most people can't, but if you can create that compelling content, that's great. doesn't matter if every 12-year-old on Instagram sees it. We want to target people who are likely to buy this home. Very easy to find out. Hard work, um, but it is easy to do the data. Yeah, it's very, very engaging. If you could actually, just thinking about what you were saying from a perspective of a seller and a buyer, a short two, three minute video, if you could compile that in a great presentation, that would open my eyes as a buyer and say, wow, look at this with the right music, you're built, you're adding emotion into it. Um, and the proper presentation could really influence uh, the amount of demand you're, you're bringing to that property. That's really Simon, I've made millions of dollars doing that. Yeah, I bet. Every single seller. Because do you need it to sell the home? No. Does your client deserve it? Yes. So, and if you want to have integrity and have alignment with what you're doing, you need to know with confidence and certainty that this process works. So you create it. But how do you distribute that? That's a different game. Upload it natively to Facebook, to Instagram, to YouTube. I'm killing it on YouTube ads. And if anyone just goes to our YouTube channel, Sure Group Real Estate, that's the name of my company, our team, that we're with Berkshire Hathaway, but our team's called Sure Group Real Estate. You'll see them all. I do it for builders and developers in the model homes. I do it for all, all the sellers. So that's how you create the demand. And what happens is, Simon, is this. You'll get, you target the public. Because look, we, hey, on a, a home you can say, hey, look, I know the buyer for this home is probably between the ages of 28 and 45, living in a 15-mile radius, making over 250K. Let's target those people. And they see the video. And with one click of a button, they can schedule a time to come see it. We're not even on the market, Mr. and Mrs. Yeah. Seller. We don't negotiate. Yeah, Someone wants to see the house. You say, hey, Simon, we haven't even 
we haven't even launched this yet, but I might be able to arrange a, a private showing. Yeah, you're creating a pre-hype over it and uh, you're telling the buyers, uh, potential buyers that let's, let's look at this before it goes to market, then you're really in a bidding war. And uh, that's incredible. And I think social media has done that. It's given uh, real estate agents or actually anybody such a platform and I'm glad you guys are using it. What's interesting enough, Andrew, is in our area, in the Bay Area, which is Silicon Valley, Palo Alto, Atherton, Hillsboro, uh, Marin County, these are some, some of the most affluent or priciest areas in the country. Unless it's like a $10 million house, it's really weird. I haven't seen too many people put that much oomph into a listing. And it's because the demand is so high or it sells itself almost. But it's incredible. Um, I would imagine that agents listening to this, even if they're in the Bay Area, if they could start putting these reels together, these videos, and you could chop those videos into reels, it would create such a hype and probably be much better for the seller uh, to, to get that bottom price or the, the top price that they want in the listing. Um, so that's great that you guys do that. Um, let's get back. A, oh, go ahead. You want well, to I should say, you know, it drives me crazy, Simon, that people only want to do it for specific properties. If you have a business, it goes back to the E-Myth, if you've ever heard of that, you have to systemize and process how you do it for everyone. You're dealing with human beings, okay? Yeah. That person who's selling a 200K home, and by the way, I'd probably be a lot better off if I was in the Bay Area versus Baltimore based on the average. You would kill it. You would kill it here. <laughs> Why would you ever treat anyone differently? Yeah. Because that person, if you kill it for a lower end home, however you perceive that to be, those people know people. Yeah. And it's easier to do it in the low end because no one else gives these people the time of day. But if you do, they're a walking billboard for you for life. That's how you create raving fans. Okay. So just whatever you're doing, 